education, your experience, the care that the faculty and the board and everyone has for you is so different than any other college, any other university, any other experience you'll have, you won't get that anywhere else because they care about our culture. They care about our, our, our ethnicity. They care about that. So it's important that you take advantage of every exposure that you're going to get, especially today. And it's homecoming week, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. We're going to start this off right. Okay, so I'm going to announce, I'm going to introduce my, my uh, panel guests and they'll get them to talk because they, they deserve to talk way more than I do. So I'm going to start with Dr. Jessica Ellis. Dr. Ellis graduated in 2003. She is the CFO, COO of Style Education Consulting LLC, the CFO and COO of J. Maxwell Investment LLC, and the Dean of Finance and Administration for the College of Nursing at the University of Arkansas for Medical Sciences. I'm going to let you all know now, once I start reading a few of these articles, you all know you got some important people in the house, okay? Philander, Philander, right? Exactly, Philander Grown right here. All right, so she has a first gen she's a first generation college student whose father continuously instilled in her the philosophy of work now, play later, but when you can afford it. Did you get that? Work now, play later, but only if you can afford it. So that, 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 that resonate real well. So what that, that actually that opportunity for her, that philosophy led her into being a, getting the being, excuse me, being a graduate from uh Land of course, with, with three, three years of distinction, of distinction in summa cum laude. So three years she, she completed everything, right? right? That's, that's, that's a hand side right, right there within itself. Three, three years, years she completed her degree. In addition to being an entrepreneur and investor, Dr. Ellis is also a revenue generate uh, generation and clinical quality improvement expert for over two years uh, of education, of, excuse me, with over two decades. Let me stop that. Investment expert over two decades with experience in the healthcare arena. So let's welcome Dr. Jessica Ellis. Our next esteemed panel guest is Mrs. Tony McCastle Freeman. Tony, and as I know it, you all know Tony Seville, yes, yes, that voice is immaculate. It goes over to, through all of the state and beyond. So Tony is a PSU graduate in 20, from 2015. She was 2005. 2005, y'all better give her 10 years. Yes, absolutely. I know that's right, Tony. 2005, let's correct that. So Tony was born in Marshall, Texas, and she graduated from McKinney High School in McKinney, Texas. Through her cum laude honors, school degrees in philosophy and religion, Tony has a long-standing career in radio and television broadcasts for over 29 years as urban radio personality, a program director, operations manager, and now a general manager. Tony Seville, as we all know and love her, in her climb from the part-time on-air uh, on personality to program director to general manager, she is much more than the girl on the radio and a DJ. She's a script writer, a commercial producer, she has served as station compliance director, federal communications commission laws and state regulations, monitors national and regional radio trends. That lets you know whatever. When you talk about somebody just being a DJ or being on the radio, my girl is way more than that, okay? She all up in there running things. You know, so that, that's all. That, y'all listen up. Y'all, I'm telling y'all, y'all in good, good ground. You better listen to this. You better resonate it. And get engaged. Get engaged. Get ready to ask some questions. So Tony Seville, ladies and gentlemen. Tony, I'm sorry, Tony. Tony Freeman. I'll never forget Tony Seville. I'm sorry. Next, we have Dr. Jivon JJ Freeman. Can I call you JJ? All right, Dr. JJ is here. Dr. JJ is a Philander Smith University graduate of 2017. Dr. JJ was born and raised on the South Side of Chicago in the uh, Argyle Gardens where he, played with his, he stayed with his mother and his five siblings. He excelled in high school, earning a presidential scholarship from Philander Smith College. He majored in biology and, uh, at Philander, spending his summers performing research around the country, focusing on DNA, DNA replication, and cancer treatments. That's amazing. Cancer treatments. He became heavily involved in student organizations during his time at Philander, including vice president of student government, Chapter President, uh, Balances of the Phi Sigma Chapter, uh, Pi, 
Nicholas Pie, exactly. Correct me. Pi Sigma Chapter of Omega Sci Fi Fraternity Incorporated. Omega Sci Fi, absolutely. He received his Master's in Science in Biomedical Sciences from Duke University School of Medicine. If you don't clap for that one, you don't clap for that one, right? Yes, yes, yes. Started Philander, went to Duke. Wow, that's amazing. Spending his time as an EMT and clinical researcher, he received his doctoral of medicine, doctor of medicine degree from Howard University of Medicine, May of 2023. That's big, that's big, that's big. That's amazing, we got a doctor in the house. If anybody needs some, y'all let them know. He currently is a first year pediatric resident at Duke University Medical Center. You guys give it up for Dr. J. J. Freeman. Couple of more, couple of more. So Mr. Akeem Powell. So Mr. Powell is a graduate of 2022, just yesterday almost. Got this so old, 2020. <laughs> so Mr. Powell, all the way from Clarendon, Jamaica. I love Jamaica, Jamaica's an amazing place. He has a bachelor's of science in mathematics. He states that I'm not, uh, I'm not just a recent graduate, of the one and only Philander Smith University, but I'm a passionate learner in the field. As a tax consultant at the world's largest professional service firm, Deloitte, 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 thank you. I navigate the complexities of taxation and de with dedication. Beyond my professional pursuits, I am an engaged member of Alpha by Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, uh, contributing to the community growth and when he's not unraveling tax codes, you will find him absorbed in general knowledge of research or enjoying joyful moments with his furry friend. What's your furry friend's name? Two now. Okay, two furry friends. Bruno. Yeah. Oh, wow. See there? Are you fur baby lovers? Okay. And last but not least, Miss Deshaun Frigidin. Yes, yes, yes. Philander Smith graduate 2022. Deshaun is an alumni of Philander Smith University, having, a graduate, uh, having graduated with the class of 2022. She pursued a bachelor's degree in business administration with a concentration in accounting. Actively engaging in campus life, Deshaun actively participates in, participated in multiple extracurricular activities alongside her academic pursuits. She assumed the role of resident assistant and took the responsibility of being director of finance for the Philander Programming Council and played a pivotal role in revitalizing that pre-alumni council and serving as its treasurer during that time at PC, PSU. She demonstrated her uh, distinction, excuse me, demonstrated her distinction by serving as a founding committee member of the establishment of the Panther Pantry, which is an amazing community effort that, that Philander is doing. Uh, in Fresh Market 2019, the pantry con continued to exist, serving a valuable resource for the members of the PSU community, as well as students, staff, professors, and whoever encountered difficulties associated with uh, inadequate accessible to food. So that's a very, very noble uh, thing that is going on, and we appreciate your dedication towards that. Don pursued further, uh, uh, Deshaun, excuse me, pursued further education at Rhodes College, successfully earning her master's degree in accounting in the spring of 2023, where she serves as an auditor. Her primary focus is of auditing, uh, is, is, uh, her primary focus is auditing FedEx, Philander Smith University played a pivotal role in shaping her academic success, her professional trajectory, and she is honored to return as alumni to share her experiences and insights, and she does not have on here that she is a soror of mine of Delta Sigma Theta Incorporated, we won't forget that, and we do have Alpha Kappa Alpha Incorporated also, Delta Sigma Theta Incorporated, so we have a group representing up in here, we in here, we in here, right? We in here, awesome, awesome. So let's get right on to the question. Let me get them. Why am I acting nervous? I know I'm not nervous. Okay. So we're going to start the questions off. We're going to let Dr. Ellis take this first one. What steered you toward your career choice and why? 
So growing up, um, two things that were important to me was the health care within our community. Um, we often are a lower SES, and as a result, our health care suffers. And so that was important to me. Um, but education was equally important. My parents um, preached education. And so that was important. And I knew that I wanted to either go into health care or into education. Um, I was not on the medical side of it. I couldn't do the blood and gut. So I knew it would be something administrative. And so um, when I got here to Philander, I made a promise to myself that I would not declare my major until I knew what I wanted to do because once I declared, I was not changing. Um, and so when it was time to declare my major, I said, well, what gives me versatility? And a business degree would give me that I could teach and I could impact healthcare for our community. And so that's what led me to, um, to major in uh, business administration here at Philander Smith. Awesome, awesome. And did you all hear about the part where she shared that was really profound? She said until she discovered and knew what her major was, she just wasn't going anywhere with it, right? She found that passion. She found that gift where she could go forward. And when she, she solidified what that was, she stuck with it. So that, that was a really profound thing, especially, especially for freshmen. I think that's very important to know. You know, sometimes we come in and we don't know exactly what we want to do, right? And that's okay. That's why you made this experience, why you get this exposure to be able to know where you're going to go next. All right, Dr. Freeman? Uh, so for me, back, in, <laughs> back when I was seven, I uh, got stabbed as a kid. And I ended up in the hospital. And so the doctors in there kind of showed me a lot of compassion, um, really taught me through a lot of science and medical terminology, and I was really hooked from there. And so I'm 28 now, so it's 21 years later. Um, kind of going into high school, I kind of lost my passion for just school, period. You know, growing up in Chicago, it's a little rough. Um, but a random, random day, uh, one of the recruiters from Philander just looked at my GPA, looked at my ACT score, said, You got a full ride. And my mom said, you going to race because no, you're not staying in Chicago. And so um, really for me, kind of going into pediatrics is really more so about helping younger kids kind of not have to go through some of the situations I went through and um, making sure that they grow up healthy and, and they have kids that can come back and see me and kind of repeat that cycle, um, especially within my family, trying to make sure that we can build some type of wealth. And being a doctor is one of the most stable jobs in the country. So, Thank you so much. And you guys can notice even both, I didn't even try that. But both of them are being in the health field, and one with education and business experience and, and that field, and then one going in the medical piece of it, you know, because I don't do the blood and gut either, sis, and I don't need either. I agree with that, but that's just, it's profound how both of you all had an experience, and we yet still giving back into the medical community. So this question is going to be for everyone, and I'm going to start on, on your way, if you don't mind, sir. So Mr. Powell, tell us, and everybody will get a chance to answer this question also. The question uh, says, talk about your most meaningful professional experience you had early in your career and share the lessons learned. And so that might be, you know, right now you may be going, you know, whatever it is, but share about that, what, what it looks like, uh, the meaningful professional experiences that you've gained so far and what lessons have you learned yet this so far? Okay. So the earliest uh, experience that I've gained was here at Atlanta, working in the president's office. I had to learn punctuality, properly dressed, and just your mannerism might be on point to be with people walking in the office from students to board of trustees to anybody dropping off a check. That was my earliest uh, experience. And then moving from Slander to now my job is just knowing how to uh, communicate with people. Even though we're, there's different uh, backgrounds and stuff, you got to know how to connect with people with different areas. It doesn't matter what it is. Race is the biggest one, right? But you got to know how to communicate and get stuff done. And I think that is the most important thing, communication. Okay. Um, so um, I'm born in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So when I came to Philander, um, I literally came by myself with uh, two of my friends from high school. Um, didn't really know many people here. Um, Philander became my family. Um, and one of my mentors on campus, um, my last name is kind of particular, Pridgen. Uh, she was on Facebook and she saw someone with the last name Pridgen. And uh, come to find out, my lineage is from Pablo, Arkansas. So um, I have a lot of family in Arkansas. Um, she connected me to a guy named Michael Pridgen. Um, he's my blood cousin. Um, and, okay. And lucky for me, he was a CPA, a certified public accountant. So um, I literally just messaged him on Facebook like, hey, um, my grandma said we're family. Um, I'm a freshman in Philander. I would love to meet you. 
Um, we scheduled a meeting March 2020. Um, I literally sat there, we had Chick-fil-A, we talked, and I told him my dreams, and um, he said, you can start next week. <clears throat> Just like that. And um, I said March 2020, so a week later, COVID happened. Um, and God bless my cousin. Um, I had to go back home for COVID, and he told me the moment I got back, he had a spot for me. Um, so fast forward to 2021, my senior year, I came back with my dad, and he had my application ready. So um, my cousin really played a pivotal part of experience, showing the experiences of being an entrepreneur. Um, he primarily worked with um, tax clients and business clients in Little Rock and um, surrounding areas, getting them acclimated. A lot of black business owners don't have the tools and resources they need to be successful. So um, he definitely showed me the ropes, um, showed me everything I know, even the things that not to do. Um, he was very transparent um, and I feel like that was something that I needed. Um, he was not only my cousin, but he was my boss, and um, he, he believed in me and my dreams. So um, not having that experience with him, I feel like I wouldn't be here today. Um, so I actually just stopped working with him this year um, to pursue my career in auditing, which he has been very um, supportive of, and actually why um, I was able to decide that I wanted to do audit instead of tax. So um, my cousin, Michael Pridgen, is definitely the reason why I'm an auditor today. That is awesome. That is awesome. Absolutely. Give our hand. Yes, yeah, absolutely. That's great. And I don't know if you guys are listening to that, students, but pay attention to being bold and stepping out and opening your mouth and asking for things, right? Because nobody will know what you need or what you want or what you desire. They're not going to read your mind. You got to step up and step out and be bold about it. And say, hey, I need a connection. I need some help. I need a job. Yeah. Whatever it is that you need, and be bold about it. Shout out to my philander mentor, Miss Marshall, because um, she sent this page to me, and I was like, I don't know this man. And she was like, girl, this man is your cousin. See? He a CPA. You better reach out to him. So um, she definitely pushed me because I definitely, I was scared. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I was like, I don't know this man. He don't know me. But uh, speaking up and the voice of what I wanted to do in my life is how I got to where I wanted to be. Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. Okay. Dr. Ellis, can you take the question? So my greatest experience was my first job out of college. Um, I was first generation. Um, my parents had some college but did not complete college. And so I had an unrealistic expectation of what my paycheck would look like coming out of college. And so my first job, um, I expected I had this degree. I'd done it in three years. You know, I had all these, these high dreams. And my first job, I was making $24,000. $24,000. And so that was a blow. To me, and it was quite disappointing because I had um, classmates who did not go to college. They were already making more than I was making out of college. Um, and so, you know, it was a humbling experience. And so what I will tell you all is do not have unrealistic expectations, but understand that that degree will tell someone that you had what it takes. You had tenacity and you had perseverance and you stuck with it and you earned that degree. OK, so that will get you in the door. But experience matters, dedication matters, professionalism matters, and you have to put in the time, you have to put in the work, and I promise you, oh, I promise you, you can get there. But understanding that that's just the first step in a very long journey towards your ultimate uh, career goals. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Y'all getting the nuggets? Uh, receiving it? Okay. All right. Tony? So mine is a little more unorthodox. Um, I was in the process of trying to become a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha. I was online and I was a full-time student, but I was also doing the morning show for Power 92. I had to be at work at 5 a.m. on the mic every morning. And I would say my most memorable and probably most helpful um, work experience was being fired. Um, I got fired. Broadway Joe fired me, honey. No. <laughs> we'll do it. And, you know, my little feelings were so crushed because I was, he knows that I was his hardest worker. But, you know, we're friends now. Let me, let me say that. I'm not bitter. But, listen, students, what helped me was being fired. And you know what he told me? He said, you need to get somewhere and work and focus and work on one thing. He said, because 
working on two and three different things, something is lacking. And at the time I thought, that's not true. I'm giving 100% to this effort of being an AKA. I'm giving 100% effort in my classwork and I'm giving 100% in the mornings. Um, but all these years later, I see what he meant. Had it not been for me getting let go at Power 92, I never would have become the Tony Seville that I am. I never would have had the opportunity to move on to different radio stations and move on and be on air in different states besides Arkansas because I would have continued to be a co-host, but by getting fired, I became a morning show host at 96.5. I moved on and fulfilled my dream of becoming an AKA and I graduated with honors. So the point in it is, don't always look at, as a, at a setback as a true setback. Sometimes it's really setting you up for your real success. That is good, that is good, absolutely, absolutely. Now I'm going to go to Dr. as well. Um, it's like a culmination of a bunch of different experiences that happened kind of when I left Philander um, to kind of go, go do research, to kind of go work, um, and understanding the difference from being in a space where you're the majority to the minority, um, and working in the healthcare field that way. Um, when I would do research, I would be the only, and I'm still the only black male around. Um, so I had to kind of learn how to do both. Um, and it's really hard at first, but you know, coming from Philander, um, I had great people in my ear telling me that I actually need to go out into the world, kind of experience it. Um, and I even see it kind of now when I'm when I'm rounding or when I'm in the mornings. Um, I'm usually like the only black male around, and when I see other black people, what are they doing? They're like they're like cleaning the rooms or bringing the food, and I don't like that. So like, it really drives me to kind of continue to be a mentor going forward because it should be different than that because all of the patient population is mixed. And when we are around it, it's just me. So it really, I used to be very uncomfortable about it. Now it really drives me, it motivates me to kind of move forward and kind of go into the second phase of my career, which is mentorship. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much, Dr. Williams. That's amazing. Uh, shifting gears a little bit, Deshaun, I'm going to pop back at you for a hot second and ask you a question really quickly because I know we're getting ready to, to be, be close to time, so I want to make sure we, we get these, uh, these good ones in. So thinking about an amazing experience, uh, that getting into education, when you think about the HBCU experience for you, you know, what that looks like and what they can afford you, because I was sharing with the students how important it is to be in this space yeah. during this time and get that. Can you talk to us a little bit about a, a, a memorable course or a memorable, you know, on campus type of situation? Um, so I'm glad you asked me that. Um, so I did four years at Philander and then I did one year um, at a PWI Rhodes College. and. Um, just gonna be honest with you, that was a culture shock for me. So um, students definitely take advantage of the cultivation that you get here, um, that one-on-one -on -one connection that you can get with the professor, or your advisor, or even people just on campus. Um, my professor, Professor Abrams, had him in my first two years. Um, he was my kind of professor. And most people when you hear accounting, they're like, oh my God, like I couldn't get past through accounting one. And I had him for accounting one and two, and those were my favorite classes. Um, not only because, yes, it was hard, but um, he made accounting enjoyable. Um, he was an entrepreneur himself in the business for a long time, and he spoke a lot about his experiences in the workforce and also just seeing the black men in accounting. Um, accounting is a white dominant field, particularly male. Um, so seeing a, a representation of a black accountant and also getting with my cousin, definitely opened my eyes that there needs to be black people in the field. Um, and I also had to get comfortable with being the only one in the field at this point. Um, at my office, there's only three of us, three black women, uh, which is, you know, we got room for progress. But um, I think having that one-on-one, -on -one, going to his office hours, he was a noob, so he had a lot of, you know, he was very funny, very charismatic. Um, Dr. Uh, Professor Abrams is the reason why I wanted to be an accountant, um, like I said, and then going to Rhodes and only having one professor that was black in the whole department was um, a culture shock. And I definitely feel like HBCUs are needed because I got that cultivation to push me through that door um, to be successful and ready to be um, at Rhodes. I was the only black female in my class. So um, 
being in an HBCU is something I definitely missed and I don't take for granted. Thank you, thank you. Awesome, awesome. I'm gonna I'm gonna shift up a little bit, whatever, because I want I know this question is so important and I want everybody to get a chance to answer this particular question. Uh, because we're talking about uh, mentorship, we're sharing with you all how important it is to connect with a mentor, to find a mentor, and then the importance of giving back. Again, I express to you all how these ladies and gentlemen have given back their time and their talent and given back to you all today, their day and everything else. I want them to share a little bit. Each one of them will talk a little bit about the importance of having a mentor and what that's done for you and share a little nuggets about that. And then I want you to share the importance of giving back. As alumni now, how important is it for you to be here in this space during homecoming? Six months, 20 years, five years, it doesn't even matter later. How does that feel for you all? And we can, uh, I'll start with my friend, Dr. JJ, and we'll just kind of go this way. Uh, I'll say it's important to have mentors, a bunch of them. Um, you'll have them in different fields for different reasons. Um, when I was at Philander, when I first got here, I knew I wanted to be a doctor, but I didn't really even know what to do. Um, I had a bunch of um, uh, uh, professors who aren't here anymore, but they were really good mentors to me. Um, just kind of like to give you a, a backstory a little bit, I got into Duke May 10th. Um, and I graduated from here May 6th, so I didn't know I was going to Duke. And so I had to pack everything inside of my professor's car to get to North Carolina. And I was, that's all I had, so I was on my air mattress for like two months. But like, I, he paid me for that. And so like, sometimes you need somebody who can actually help you, whether it be financially, whether it be um, emotionally or anything. So you need different people for different things. Um, so um, the second question was about giving back. Um, when I asked him, you know, if he needed any money back once I started working, he just said, no. Nah, Paying forward, you know, we're frat brothers as well, so that's kind of what we do. Where we, we just pay it forward, you know, we don't worry about giving it back for ourselves, and so that's really why mentorship and giving back is good for me. Whenever I do get that attending check, because I'm still a resident, I'll try to give back to the Philander as much as I can and at least help individual students at the little, at the, at the minimal. Thank you, Tommy. So, um, being a mentor for, for me being a mentor is important. Now, having received mentorship, um, you know, if I look back, I can't identify just one individual that was this awesome mentor for me. I had several people that were friends slash mentors, or they, they were that mentor and they turned into a really good friend. Um, so sometimes, pay attention, sometimes they kind of blend. If you pay attention to the conversations, uh, pay attention to the resources that they're offering, and you'll find out like, oh, this friend is like really my mentor and pushing me forward. But being a mentor is so important. It feels really good to help someone, to help someone achieve something that they thought they probably couldn't do on their own. So when you get the opportunity, be a mentor as well. Don't just look for a mentor but be a mentor, okay? You're intelligent enough and resourceful enough to mentor someone. Last but not least in giving back. So, you know, we talk about giving back in so many different ways. Philander knows they can call me to do anything, honey, come in and dust off this auditorium and I'll be here to do it because this school gave me so much. I was already in my career. Like I had been in my career field for at least five years before I enrolled at Philander. So what I need Philander for? I needed Philander for, to, to solidify the degree, right? I needed Philander to have the paper, but Philander gave me family. So a lot of times I play around with my friends and I spell Philander with an F <laughs> instead of the PH because Philander gave me family and for that very reason, it is my responsibility to give back. Don't you give to your mama if she needs it? If you give to your siblings if they need it, this is my family. So I'm going to give to my family if it needs it, whether it's time or money. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, Tony. Dr. Ellis? So like Tony and Dr. JJ both mentioned, um, I, it's not one mentor. There are different mentors, different people for different reasons, for different purposes. Um, and it doesn't have to be a formal relationship. But if there's something that you're pursuing and there's someone that knows a little bit more than you do, ask right go and seek individuals and then watch those that you surround yourself with right because if you have the right friends surrounding you they are mentors too they may be you all may be on the same level as far as education but they have life experiences that can influence 
um, what you're going through or inform you through a situation. And so I think you can look to your friends to be mentors, but I think also seek mentors. And like Tony said, you know, you have to reach back, right? So you hear you hear it all the time about how many shoulders we stand on. But as a people, you all, we stand on shoulders. Things that we are taking for granted, our ancestors did not have these opportunities. And it wasn't so long ago. I'll tell you, you know, my father was born in 1950, and he grew up in North Rock, and he had to run past North Rock High every day because he was being chased. Okay, so my father's passed, but he would be 73. That's not that long ago. And, you know, he used to say to me, Jessica, he said, um, I'm going to tell you about the world, not because I want you to use it as an excuse, but I wanted you to use it as a toolkit, right? And so a lot of things that were once under the table are now back on the table. So we hear things. I, I hear things in the workplace. Um, you mentioned you're the only one sitting in the room. My entire career, I've been the only one looking like me sitting in the room. And the things that I hear are disheartening in 2023. But we are still in that place. And so I go back, we stand on the shoulders of individuals who sacrifice their lives just for education, right? And so we cannot take it for granted. And, you know, I've been a professor, um, I, I taught at Arkansas Baptist for a while, and it was important for me to go back and teach at a HBCU because not everyone is going to give us what we need. There's a thing called theory. Then you learn how to apply that theory. But then as a people, you have to learn how to utilize it to get ahead. And it's, it's a different game for us. Um, and so having a strong mentor can take you through some of those situations. You can have those conversations because once you encounter those, you can't stop. If you're rounding and you, you encounter something, you can't stop. You have to know how to go within and combat that and still stand strong and still perform because you have to perform. Um, and so, you know, we talk about giving back. If you look at um, look at some of these big name universities, I won't call any, and they seem to be rich beyond belief. You know how they're rich? They're alumni. Absolutely. They're giving back. And we may not have as much to give, but give what you can give in time, in money, in scholarships. Not all of us can afford to go to college, and so that deters a lot of individuals because I can't afford it. But my goodness, if we had a scholarship and we can go and, and our recruiters can talk to these individuals and say, I have a scholarship just for you. And the only way that we can get these scholarships is that if we're giving back to our Philander Smith University so that they have that resource to be able to offer students. Because guess what? The job is not over when you so much is given, much is required. And I stand on that. So you're receiving a lot to give a lot. That's good. That's good. I think Tony had a, a one. I did. One. one second, if you don't mind. I, I, I want to piggyback on something. So when we're talking about this whole giving back thing, right, it always sounds like money, 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 money. But you have to be unique and creative in how you give back to Philander. So for me, for the past 10 years, another alum and I, we've always thrown a party on Saturday night, right? It's always been the finale party. But guess what we do? From the money that we get, we give back to Philander. So you don't have to just always say, oh, I can't afford it from my check because I'm fresh out of school or I don't make a lot of money. Be creative in how you give Philander back. But I'm just saying, keep it in your mind. Like, keep it forefront. Even if, listen, I'll give you a really quick example. I was president of my sorority's graduate chapter. We were focusing on HBCUs. Guess who was going to get that check first? Who? Philander. Philander, right? I was going to make sure if we're giving to the four HBCUs in Arkansas, my school going to be first because I'm the president. And I'm going to make sure. So that's what I mean when I say be creative. Work it and maneuver it the way you can. And with mentorship, follow up. Sometimes we're very busy, and you may ask one time, and then you may not hear back from us. Don't get in your feelings. Just follow up, okay? We may have, you know, kind of forgotten. It may have slipped our minds, but you are a priority because you're a philandarian, okay? Absolutely. Um, speaking of creative, um, before I speak on mentorship, um, as a young alum, we're just not graduating, so we might not have the financial means to contribute, but we, some of the fellow alums at Philander, we have come together to 
put our money together to um, get baskets or gift bags to students for this homecoming. So on Friday, we'll be giving out hygiene and feminine and cleaning supplies to students. So um, shout out to Jill and Tara for spearheading that, but we're literally collaborating right now to get money together so that we can at least do something um, two years out, we can still give y'all something that we know we needed when we were there. So, um, so that's the way we're being creative. Um, and don't bark at Philander at homecoming when they charge to park or when they the money is going to the school. Okay, absolutely. But um, when you when I think of a mentor, um, I think of Miss Michelle Marshall. I met her my first week at Philander, and she sat with my family at my graduation. So that just goes to show um, how important she was in my development at Philander. Um, she she definitely was the one to prioritize me getting other mentors. I relied so much on her that she had to say, "Look, you know, I can be here for you, but I cannot do everything, and I need you to seek outside." So I'm going to charge the students to find mentors off and on campus, um, specifically someone in your career field or where you want to be, um, someone that can help you personally in your personal life and conflict resolution and all those things and also someone who can help you spiritually so um, Cause cause being, being a first generation, generation college, college student and being away 700 miles away from home was not easy um shout out to my soror um dr christy king she took me in didn't know me from a can of paint and she is the reason why i finished school she let me live with her she took care of me gave me everything that i needed um she was a personal mentor miss marshall was a personal mentor my cousin he was a professional mentor and then my pastor she's my spiritual mentor so um having mentors in different aspects of your life is important they know different things they know different people they can give you different advice but also Having a mentor means you have to listen. Um, listen. Um, I would not be 24 years old, master's degree, real estate investor, all these things without having mentors and taking heed to what they said. So, um, you know, you always take everything with a grain of salt. You know, some people have not walked in your shoes. So they can't tell you everything. But um, I can say learning from other people mistakes or other people bad decisions and also good decisions is what um allowed me to be who I am today. So getting a mentor and also listening to your mentor is very important. Um, thank you, thank you. So uh Deshaun made a good point listening to your mentor. Because my mentor comes from but he gave me a tip uh first one year he told me I should make a schedule and go by the schedule. I never made the schedule until my last year in school. And my last year was the most productive and successful year I had as an understanding. This is when I got my job offer. This is when I learned Python. This is when I learned SQL. This is when I started my Google Data Analytics cert certification. This is when I did all these along with being an RA, being an intern in the office, and still taking 17 hours. All of this, all that once and I was able to do all that, still have time to play video games and hang out with people. <laughs> so, like, you know, that was a very important tip. Yeah. So, actually, I'm a mentor. But not only having a mentor, but there are mentors in your life that you don't even know. I had, like, peer mentors. Those are real things. Yeah. So, like, I had a few friends that he will say, if you, need, you, you need to do better. Like, you could do better. Just get a, a, a tutor or something, or he'll even tutor me myself in a specific class or subject or whatever it is. So you have people like that. And just having regular conversation with uh, older people, sometimes even younger, just like listening and taking heed to what they're saying. Sometimes it might be helpful, sometimes it's not. And then it's also how you interpret those uh, advice. If you take it in the wrong way, it could be bad. If you take it in the right way, it could be way more uh, productive to your life than you thought it would. Oh, and you also, when I give you tidbits, you might not need it right in that moment. You might not need it right in that moment. So um, always, like I said, if you listen, you'll keep it. And one day it might pop up and you're like, oh, I remember when so-and-so told me. So listening, listen, get a mentor and listen to a mentor. Yeah. Another thing was um, getting ready for my interview with my dog. I went to Dr. Smith and I went to Dr. Smith. I have this interview. But I'm not sure I'm really prepared for it. He gave me his tips, but he also put me in contact with a human resource manager at Lockheed Martin. Mm -hmm. And me and this man, I didn't know it was on, on Zoom at 10 p.m. at night, getting ready for my interview.
message. Wow. And, and once I got it, they didn't know, hey, I got it. I was like, okay, well, we need to connect sometime in the future, whatever. But still, it's the mentor. He gave me what he knew yeah. and connected me with someone who knew more. Yeah. 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 So, get you a mentor. Yeah. Part two. Yeah. There are a lot on Philander, so definitely Philander mentors are the, the ones that I cherish the most. So. skills that helped me to get my job, not just the degree. So take charge and learn things alongside your degree, and that will put you ahead of the people that you're competing against to get the job. Awesome. Take charge. Um, I would have a phrase, um, visualize your dreams. Um, coming from the north side of Milwaukee, I had a lot of people who I, let's just say I knew I didn't want to be like, if that makes sense. I didn't have a lot of role models, um, definitely didn't have a lot of people in college or even with careers. So. Um, a lot of that was me visualizing what I wanted for my life, um, thinking about what I wanted for my life. So I would tell the students now, if you don't, you look around and you don't see what you want to see, or if you don't see the life that you want to have, don't let that discourage you. Um, I would say pray and ask God to help you get to those dreams. Um, I would not be standing here right now. It's unbelievable to be the place that I am because statistically, I'm not supposed to be here. Statistically, I'm not supposed to be a graduating woman. I'm not supposed to have a master's. I'm the first in my family to pursue higher education. So um, I had to visualize that, get a vision board. Um, and I said digital vision board. I have my vision board on my iPad because I see that every day. So visualizing your dreams, taking a picture, putting it on your lock screen, speaking those things, affirmations, all those things are what help me get to living my dreams. I can truly say at 24 years old, I'm living my dreams. So uh, um, Amazing. yeah. Amazing. So visualize your dreams. Visualize your dreams. I have to stick with my father. Work now, play later. And it doesn't mean you don't get to play now, but your focus is working. And then when you get into a position where you want to be, and you define what that is, no one can define that for you, then you can play a little bit more than you work. I would say um, absorb and, you know, I'm, I'm really meaning like a sponge. So, you know, if you picture a sponge with the water, it literally soaks it up, right? You put the sponge on top of the water, you remove it, the water's gone because it's within you. So absorb everything as a freshman going on around you um, from, you know, paying attention to your professors, pay attention to the social life, pay attention to your goals and how you plan to set things in place to move forward. I want you to absorb it all because eventually you will secrete what you absorb. You will push out what you pull in. That's good. That's good. My colleagues made a lot of good points. Uh, I would just say uh, live a little. Uh, kind of going back to what you said a little bit. Um, if you're kind of going into medical school or you're going into residency and you got a 4.0 or whatever, but you don't do anything else, that's a 2.0 to me. You know, you're not personable. You have to deal with people every single day. Um, and something that you said as well, I'm going to switch it up a little bit. Mine is work hard, play hard. So um, I do everything that I do so that I can come to homecoming um, and be free from work yeah, um, and yeah. you have to work to get there. You yeah. can't do it before you, you can't relax before you get yeah. your work done. So. Business before pleasure. We got the other part too, we got the other thing. Also say, you know, work hard, play hard. I'm sorry, work now. Work now, play later, if you can afford it. And that's what kind of comes on that. Yeah. He earned the right to be able to be here and because he worked now, hard. Wait a minute, he didn't say if you can afford it. He said when you can afford it. Because it's going to come. Yeah. It's going to come. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. oh, absolutely. Delayed gratification. There yeah. you go. Yeah. There you go. Yes. Like, you know, it's, it's not the house. 
I want to be able to turn the mic over. I'm going to turn the mic over to you. You all here, please give this a steam of amazing alumni of Philadelphia University. The big hand clap. You can give them a big, big, amazing job. I would like to take a moment, uh, students, as you come forward down either aisle, if you have questions, please make your way down. I would like to. Uh, as Mr. Smith mentioned, I want to acknowledge our uh, esteemed president, Dr. Thompson, if you'd like to have something to say. If you comment, if not, students, if you'll make your way down, we'll hear your uh, questions and or concerns that you have for the panelists. Thank you so much. I'm just long today, and I tell you, what those women here in the room, they yeah. You guys are saying too that my tips is really stuck all the way. These are ours. Yeah. These are ours. Yeah. The wisdom, their wise way beyond their years, and I'm so so very proud of all of you. And thank you so much for taking time to come today and to share with these young people. And I hope you heard what they said. Um, also, I would say um, surround yourself with people who help you. Um, I know for me, procrastination, I struggle with it as well, but um, I had I had to make it fun. So me and my friends, we would go to the library. We would study outside or we would have a day. Okay, we're going to study this day and then we're going to go to this party on Friday. You know, just kind of balancing it out and putting those people around you. Because if you're in school, all y'all in school, y'all all are here to get a degree, I would hope. So make sure that the people that you surround yourself are supporting you on that journey because you can help somebody. You know, maybe like accounting, it was hard. So a lot of us had to come together and do that homework. So if that's what you got to do, do that. Put your friends and say, hey, you got a test due, I got a test due. Let's stay together. You know, make it more enjoyable. You are in school, still have fun, but also take care of your priorities. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And if they're your real friends, they'll understand. If they're your real friends, they will understand. I got to study. Uh, I want to add something to that, too, as well. Uh, you really got to be honest with yourself. Um, everybody has this thing on their phone called screen time. Mm -hmm. And when you look at it, you can see Twitter for about three hours of your time. And so for me, I study a lot. I have a lot of uh, anatomical, bio, whatever you want to call it, to give you, right? And I have to study 45 minutes or 15 minutes off, whatever it is. But if I'm on TikTok for four hours a day, that's four hours wasted. That's cutting down to two. 
and then I'll write everything down and I cross it off. When I cross it off, it feels good. There's, there's something at the end of the line for me. Whether it be when I get home, I get to watch, play games like, you know, he does at the end of the day. There's something at home for me when I'm done, but it's only when I'm done. Thank you. Hello, my name is Mike Kidd Powell. Um, I have a question for each panel member. Uh, my question is, what were all of y'all's biggest mistakes in college? I can go first. Um, I'll go first. Um, like I said, I was one of the first in my family to go to college and go so far away from home. Um, and I kind of high school, I didn't really, I didn't, I want to say I didn't really care as much, but when I came to Philander, I was like, I'm on scholarship. I gotta, you know, I have the 4.0. I have to have everything. Uh -oh. Um, so, um, I was, I would say I was so I would say I didn't balance school. Um, I, a lot of my times was spent in the library. A lot of my times was sitting in my room. Um, and I probably did finish my work if I would prioritize building those relationships. So I would say um, being so focused in my books. I, I definitely could have had some leeway in going out to the CAF or going out to school events. Um, to Lander, a lot of people say if Lander don't have nothing, yes they do. You gotta get out your room. Um, I would definitely say get out your room. To Lander has events. Philander has events. Philander has stuff to do. You just have to go out and do it. And if your friend don't want to go, you go. You go by yourself. So um, I would say balancing school and also that HBCU college experience because now I'm grown and I'll be tired after work. So, you know, um, I would say balancing that out, definitely. I think also um, one of my mistakes was not going to school. No. I went to good enough. But not enough. But I think I went to one that made all the difference. And that was the one where I met uh, a partner and a lawyer. And that's how I got my degree. So I tell you to that. Please support. So let me piggyback. So I was serious, and work was all I did. Um, and I don't regret it. But I, I do feel like I missed out on the true HBCU experience because I, I worked while I was in school working. Um, and, and it paid off. But I, if I could go back and have that experience because it's such a unique experience, I would definitely make time for a little bit more play. My last semester, I, I, I made up a little bit. But, <laughs> but balance. Balance is so important because life is short and we don't know when that life ends. And so staying focused on your end goal, but also enjoying some of the right now. And going to a PWI, I could tell I missed Philander, okay? I missed it. I missed it. All right. Um, you know, I, I don't have that story. I did a little much. Um, but I think my biggest mistake was not taking advantage of available scholarships. I didn't. I just, you know, I, I went to school and I was paying for it. Um, and in hindsight, I wish I would have sought out more scholarships because the Lord knows paying back the loans is serious business um so if you can you know go to the offices go online search out those scholarships 500 250 at a time to to help you pinch away at those costs um, i say uh, can you know okay. i say my, my biggest mistake uh back then was not really being present um uh, some of my friends are in the, in the audience uh, they can tell you i was couldn't really say anything to me. Uh, I was very, very, you know, very, very spontaneous. Uh, being where I'm from, I just felt like I had to be like that. Uh, and my second point is see somebody, like a therapist or something, because the whole time I was just depressed. There's things in the background, we're working so hard that we don't, like I said, be honest with ourselves and we're not present. And so you can go through four years of undergrad and then you get into the real world and you can't manage it. And you're, messed up. You have a degree, but you can't get a job. You have to be on the job. And so being present, enjoying what you have now, because I, I wish I was in college. I'm paying bills. I got lo my loan started this month. Yeah. Um, and I work six days a week. So um, I wish I could be back in undergrad. I wish I could experience it again as an undergrad. So just be present and see somebody.
Let me add one more thing for you. Internships. Take advantage of those internships because they will set you up so you have a degree plus you have some experience. And then you get to make some connections with maybe some, some larger organizations. But um, that is a, a true regret of mine. I, I didn't have one internship. Um, and I think that would have set me up. And so maybe I would have been making more than 24000 <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Good afternoon. Hi, I'm Michael T. Prescott Jr., the 11th Mr. Philander Smith University. Yes. Yes. Come so, on, King. The question that I have is centered around the career fields that you are all in, where you're in places where you're basically the only person of color in that position. What advice would you give to someone going into that as I'm looking to go into industrial and organizational psychology where there's about four to five percent of black people in that industry? Know that you're enough and you're there because you deserve to be there and no one but you can put you out, right? But then there's a responsibility that comes with that too, mentorship. When you can bring somebody else along or when you see someone else that looks to be the minority, take them under your wing because it, it can be hard to, to get through it. But sometimes you'll feel like, well, really, do I belong here? And the answer is you absolutely do. Um, I would say me personally, like I said, I'm one of three in my office and um the one of them, she did take us under our wing. She's a year in and she took the two young ones and was like, you know, I know it ain't many of us, but I got you. You know, if you can, if there's anything I can do, I will be there for you. Um, I would say if you can try to find someone, if not, um, find an outlet because yes, you're supposed to be there. Yes, you're meant to be there, but it's still hard to be there, you know? So um, I'm in therapy. That's something that I always talk to my therapist about is like the importance of knowing that I'm supposed to be there, but also feeling like that. You can tell yourself and tell yourself until it becomes true. So um, I would say um, just believe it, you know, feel it. Don't feel like you need to shrug. No, be that black man in that room. And also like with me, I wear my curly hair. I came in my interview with my curly hair. I want you to know I am black and I will be black. So um, I'm cute now, but you know, so um, being who you are and don't let them water you down. Don't let them make you feel scared that you can't speak. No, speak your truth. Be who you are and stand in that. And the right company will appreciate that. I want to just take a quick moment, panelists, if you will, and students. We want to be very respectful of time. We started a little late, but we so I thank you guys for coming out. We have a couple of more questions, actually. And then from there, I want you to invite everyone to come up and speak with our panelists take pictures, but if we can get through the, the questions and then that way, if you guys have to go, great. If you do not, then let's just continue the conversation. Uh, okay. Uh, when navigating some of these spaces, I think the first thing that you need to do is just make sure that you maintain uh, your professional at all times. Um, you have to watch your back just at, at, a, just at a baseline and making sure that you cover that, whether it be getting something in the email, um, none of that walking past meeting stuff, that's, that doesn't really work because it's a he say, it's a he say, uh, say she say thing when it comes to that. Um, the next thing I'll say is that um, knowing that that's not the end goal. Um, and so I don't wanna be the only one, you know, I wanna make it up so that somebody else can come in behind me, right? So I gotta do my job um, both as a mentor and mentee, finding mentees. Um, reaching out, be like, hey, do you need help? You know, and just giving back in time. Like we were talking about giving back some of your time earlier in the day. And so um, knowing that you're not going to be the only one forever, it really kind of helps because every time I go in the patient's room and I have a clinic or something like that and they're black, they love to see me. Like I, I can see it on their face. And so when I walk out the room, I'm like, okay, I'm here for a reason. Yeah. You know, and so they'll come back to me next time. I'm their PCP now, the primary care physician now. So just those little small things help. Yeah. And, you know, I have to think about, like, you know, let's look at the reverse of it, right? You're here at Philander Smith College, or Philander Smith, and, um, you know, we have white students, right? They're the minority here, um, but they're themselves. Be yourself. Don't, don't, don't necessarily feel like, no, let, let me say, when I say be yourself, that, that's not an excuse students to black 
That's not what we do. We are black, right? But we don't act black. We don't have to because we are black. We're African-American, we're black, we're minorities and we're majority. So I say that to say, make sure when you're in your space, you be yourself and you, when I'm here at Philander, I can let all my hair down, lean forward and be me. But I also am myself when I'm in other spaces and I know how to sit back and I know how to act, okay? So when we're acting, we're really just being ourselves. Always be versatile. Allow yourself to be versatile, whether you're the minority or the majority. I, I know I'm not a panel and I just, but I want to chime in because it has some amazing information just really quickly. Because the information I, I I have that same you know you know opportunity to be sometimes the only person in the room. I like my sister, whatever. I I share all my ethnicity. I bring it to the table, and I think you being your authentic self. I think you are show, you know showing that value and showing up who you are, but then definitely being the proud, professional, you know, dignified people that we are that they understand what that means. And so when you wear your braids or you wear your hair, however it is, but you are still, your, your diction and your poise and everything else is together, then they will respect that. They will respect that in any fold. I work in diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging, and it's very important to me uh, when we talk about those things or whatever, being the only person in the room and being recognized and being represented, but knowing your value and your voice, okay? Good afternoon, my name is Olivia Wilkins. I serve as the 60th Mr. Landers Smith University. So my question for you all, so you all emphasize the importance of finding a mentor. So what advice would you give to students when looking for a mentor and basically deciding who's good for you and who's not good for you? Uh, I would say be direct. Um, like I said, sir, you can, uh, hey, I, I need this. Um, and then, all they can tell you is no. Um, being um, confident in reaching out um, in the first place is enough. Um, and also reaching back out again, because uh, like we were talking about earlier, I don't, I don't have my text messages notifications on. Like you have to call me twice. And so knowing that I tell people, don't text me because I'm not going not to respond. Call me twice, call me three times if it's an emergency or if you need to talk to me, I won't be annoyed. And so being that, having that relationship you can develop with somebody. It does not have to be somebody very, very high up. Like I said, I had friends when I first got here as a freshman. Um, they were seniors, and they helped me through biology. This is what we do. These are the do's and don'ts. And so reaching out to people that are your age, they might have something that you don't know. Or just, you know, an email can, can do wonders. So just being confident enough to reach out. Uh, I would say um, don't, do, don't think too hard about it. When you think of a mentor, you think of, oh, a mentor. No, you, I'm sure you have a mentor right now. Someone that you talk to, it could be a professor. It could be someone you see in the business building. Like, it does not have to be some specific person. If you feel like that is a meaningful relationship, that's a mentor. Um, like I said, and also being direct, you, people can't read your mind. So if you're not saying, hey, I'm looking for this or I want to do this, how would they know? Um, so speaking up and cultivating relationships, let it be genuine. Don't force it. Let it be genuine because people can tell when you want to use them. So try to build that genuine relationship because, like I said, my mentor started off as an advisor, and she sat with my family at graduation. So if you cultivate those mentorship relationships as genuine relationships, they will be beneficial for both of you guys. And last but not least, you know, recognize reciprocity. So sometimes you may be a mentor for someone. And that mentee can in turn mentor you. So I think about, um, he's not, I don't see him here today, but um, he's probably out busy. But um, Kevin Cooper on campus, right? He likes to look at, oh, he's here. Hi, oh, where you at, Coop? Hey, Coop. <laughs> so he likes to reference me as that title of a mentor. But there, you know, I look up to things that he does here at Philander and I, I try to be that philanderian like he is whereas in undergrad you know he was i guess fond of opportunities that um i was able to kind of help and set forth for him so, I, <laughs> I love you too i didn't know you were here <laughs> but yeah so recognize you actually may be mentoring somebody that you can learn something from as well yeah don't be afraid to exchange mentors yeah 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 also Okay. 
And also, as your as a queen, know that you are a mentor to this campus. So don't forget that either. Oh, hello, everyone. My name is Megan Taylor, senior business marketing major from Chicago, Illinois. I currently hold the 23-24 Miss UNCF title. Yes. Um, so <laughs> yes. So I wanted to say thank you for the gems and tips that you guys have been giving us. So as a senior, it seems like the only question I've been getting is, what are your plans for postgrad? Mm -hmm. So my question is, how do you determine whether or not you're just simply coming up with the answer for the question versus like actually knowing what you're passionate about? Ooh, like, Ooh you hit a nail. Um, I'm, I want to speak first because that was the question that I got. And it, it, respectfully, you had to tell them, respectfully, I haven't decided yet. Or respectfully, I don't know yet. And people have to respect that you know people i would say my family specifically they was like what's next what you've been you've been doing so much what's next and i'm like look i don't know you know and honestly roads wasn't a thing i literally went to roads with my aunt to visit for my cousin i was just going just to go come to find out they had a master's program and i ended up talking to the professor and it literally fell in my lap but before then i did not know what i wanted to do and i feel like that is okay don't let people pressure you to feel like you have to have it figured out no you don't you don't Take your time because you, this is, if you want to go back to school, that's expensive. If you don't want to go back to school, you have to pick the right job. Like, take the time, figure out right what you want and what you don't want. Or look about, like me, I knew the life that I wanted to live. So going to pursue a master's degree was going to help me fulfill that. And also I had a scholarship, so it lined up. So you have to weigh your pros and cons for you. Do not let anyone pressure you to feel like you have to have it figured out. No. Take your time. Pray. And ask God to put those people in those positions and those opportunities in your lap. And it will come to you. You, you We ain't even finished the, the first semester. So don't be so quick to look ahead. And like my best friend told me, I'm living in my prayers right now. So be present in where you are right now and take heed of that. So, yeah. Uh, you got to learn how to pivot real quick sometimes. Or you got to learn how to stay still. Kind of like what she was talking about. Like I said, May 6, 2017, I graduated from Philander. And I was just gonna stay at my brother's house and just work, do something that would help me get clinical experience to get into med school. That was my long-term goal, but I didn't know the in-between. May 10th is when I got into to do for my grad, my master's. So I was like, I was going on vibes. I was like, I'm going. <laughs> like that's kind of how my life moved a little bit. Um, but um, I really didn't know for those for those four days in between. I really was just thinking about what I was gonna do to make money um, or what I was gonna do to like kind of hold myself over until I could get to that point. But I just say, if you're going to like take a break or get stagnant or something like that, just have a finite amount of time before you know what you're going to do next. You, you should have your long-term goals and then you should have short-term goals for sure. That can always switch, just like mentor switch. And writing everything down really helped for me. I still have journals from years ago where I had all my things on December 15th, 2013, what I was doing that day. Um, and I had it scratched out what I did do and what I didn't. And so like just knowing that things can change very, very quickly. Um, and just having backups to your backup. What's your major? Marketing. So try to find someone in business, whether it's marketing or not, someone in business. And talk to them and ask them if they went to school, what did they do? Like, that was one thing that I did. Talk to people who are in the position that you want to be because they can give you advice. They've been in your shoes. They know what it, you know, what it takes to do that. So find someone in your field that you can reach out to. Great question. And with that, that's going to conclude our 2023 alumni panel uh, discussion. Please give it up for all our wonderful alums. Students, give yourself a hand for staying with us. We appreciate you. Please come down and mingle with our panelists. And from there, we're dismissed for the day. Thank you. Thank you.